Good evening, and welcome to the House of Swing. I'm Kat Henry, and I oversee our concerts and touring department. On behalf of all of us here at Jazz at Lincoln Center, I'd like to welcome you to our 29th opening night. Yeah. We are ready to get the ball rolling on some incredible programming for you this year. And it's our first full season in our spectacular, newly renovated home. Good evening, I'm Todd Stoll and I head up our education endeavors. We're constantly expanding our reach and impact with kids from our very youngest with our WeBop program that starts at eight months old all the way up through Swing University for Adults, uh, including our pre-concert lectures, which I'm sure many of you attended this evening, one of our lectures. Um, we also have our wonderful essentially Ellington High School program, which as of this morning went live with we're distributing almost 25,000 charts to over 4,100 high schools across America. Hi, and I'm Gabrielle Armand, and I'm responsible for our brand and audience development, including our newly founded record label, which some of you may have purchased a few records from, Blue Engine Records. I want to give a special welcome tonight to everyone who is watching us online through live stream and through our very first Facebook Live that we just did uh, a few minutes ago. We just wrapped. This is the fourth consecutive year that we have broadcast live and for free all of our concerts to our audience of more than 1.4 million. Yes, I said 1.4 million people around the world in more than 100 countries. So we're all so happy that you can all join us tonight. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, Gabby. So Gabby, Todd, and I uh, represent the three pillars of Jazz at Lincoln Center's mission, performance, education, and advocacy. But we couldn't do what we do without the leadership and support of our board of directors. So we'd like to take a moment to recognize our current board chairman, Bob Appel, and our Emeritus Chairs, Lisa Schiff and Gordon Davis. They stand with us here on the bandstand to represent the continuum and the commitment that allows us to serve so many with this music that we love, jazz. We would like to thank you all for your continued support, enjoy the show. And ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to please stop by the Mika and Ahmed Erdogan Atrium for a complimentary champagne toast during our intermission. And following the show, we'd like you to look out for a special gift courtesy of Jazz and Lincoln Center's own Blue Engine Records. And now please join me in welcoming to the Rose Theater stage the Jazz and Lincoln Center Orchestra with Wynton Marsalis. Thank you very much. Tonight we're gonna to hear a spectrum of pianists ranging in age from 13 to 89. And 
It is going to demonstrate our ongoing commitment to the continuum and the belief in the non-segregation of generations and everybody coming together. We're going to begin tonight with a pianist we all know and love, someone who loves and lives to swing. He was born in 1982 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, but he cut his teeth on the Chicago jazz scene. He came to New York City and stole our hearts. Representing all of the 30-year-olds in the world, please welcome our house pianist, Mr. Dan Nimmer. Thank you so much. It's a crazy age bracket, 30s. Well, I don't know about that. Uh, thank you so much for that introduction. It's an honor to kick tonight off. Um, and it's an honor to be up here with all these great pianists and all these great musicians. Let's give the other pianists a big round of applause. So we're going to start with a song. When they asked me what I wanted to do, I tried to pick one of my heroes, and that was very difficult because I have so many heroes from this instrument. Um, so I just went with something that I've heard every day uh, when I was in the car driving from school to my gigs in Chicago, and that was a record by Wynton Kelly um, entitled Kelly at Midnight. And uh, Philly Joe Jones, Paul Chambers, doesn't get much better than that. So this is a beautiful arrangement that my brother Marcus Prinup has done of temperance. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
Now we'd like to bring a gentleman out to represent the late teens, the 20s, he's almost 20. <laughs> he's from West Orange, New Jersey and was a member of our Jazz at Lincoln Center Youth Orchestra. We first encountered him as a member of the fabulous Jazz House Kids Jazz Ensemble and he is currently in his second year at the Juilliard School. But he is, I assure you, fantastic in every way. Please welcome Mr. Isaiah Thompson. Hello, everybody. <laughs> How you doing? Uh, the first, one of the first times I met Mr. Marsalis, he, uh, he told me to listen to a, a record. It's entitled, It's Monk's Time. It came out in 1964. And uh, first time I listened to it, I'd really not been exposed to Monk that much. It's a Thelonious Monk. And after listening to that, I realized it's a very important composer, um, artist that you just have to, if you're a piano player, it's something very special. He has a very specific concept, especially when he's uh, accompanying other people, other musicians. And so I learned a lot from that. I'm continuing to learn from that. And so the song we're about to play is the first song on that album. It's entitled Lulu's Back in Town. Hope you enjoy.
Isaiah Thompson. Let him feel you. Let him feel you. Sherman Irby, and alto saxophone. Isaiah was a, was a TA at our summer camp, and we teach in the camp, and we're talking about who should do the arrangement. He showed me his transcription of Monk's solo. It had all kind of nine against eight, and 15 against three, and 17 against nine, and we have the expert up here, all of those, those types of things, and you heard his mastery with his penmanship. Mr. Vincent Gardner did that arrangement. Next song we're gonna play um, was written by Oscar Peterson, uh, and it's one of the most soulful things I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> uh, it means a lot to me, and it represents a lot of things, but I think it encompasses the most important things. Uh, so this is Hymn to Freedom.
Isaiah Thompson, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to make sure that he gets an A for this semester. <laughs> Our next guest attended Houston's famous high school for the performing and visual arts. And she thought she wanted to be a classical pianist until jazz hit her during her undergraduate studies at the University of Texas in Austin. Well, she was in the first class of the Thelonious Monk Institute of Jazz Performance, and that experience led her on the path that she is now on, which is one of absolute excellence. She is a fantastic musician, teacher, and now a ranger, representing people younger than Ted Nash and me. <laughs> Please welcome Miss Helen Sung. Okay, we have a little bit of a technical thing with the desk. It was put in backwards. Do you mind if I put it in correctly? Well, uh, needless to say, it is an incredible honor and, uh, you know, for someone from Houston, Texas, New York, and everything associated is like the, oh, like on a magic mountain. <laughs> and so, uh, what a privilege to be here. And when I was first asked to participate, uh, they said, pick a piece by a pianist that you love. Uh, unfortunately, Monk was already taken. So, <laughs> so I thought, well, who else? Um, you know, there's, of course, there's so many, so many to choose from. And this pianist has always fascinated me, and I really consider him in the lineage of Monk. And uh, when I told uh, J Jason O'Lane that I wanted to do McCoy Tyner, uh, I said, what about four by five? He says, well, there's no big band arrangement of it. And I had just finished a year of the BMI Jazz Workshop under Andy Farber and Jazz Lincoln Center's own Ted Nash. And probably feeling a little overconfident, I said, well, I'll write it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I have to thank uh, trombonist and composer uh, Alan Ferber for giving it the look over and reminding me that horn players need to breathe. And, <laughs> and also uh, Mr. Marsalis and uh, everyone here for refining it to what it is uh, now. So we, I hope you enjoy this. This is McCoy Tyner's Four by Five.
Let's have a song. Dick McGoins, tenor saxophone. Ali Jackson, the drum. As Mr. Marsala said, I was lucky enough to study at the Thelonious Monk Institute, and recently I was interviewed for something by Jazz at Lincoln Center, and they asked, you know, who was the teacher that came through that stressed you out the most? <laughs> I said, well, you know, probably Ron Carter's number one, but a very, very close second, maybe first and a half, is Mr. Winston Marsalis. <laughs> so I have to thank him so much for everything and this opportunity, and I'd like to uh, play a solo piece I first heard this on a Red Garland record and um, just fell in love with the melody and I decided to learn it. It's by Percy Mayfield and it's called Please Send Me Someone to Love.
Helen Song. Helen Song. Carlos Enriquez on the base. Thank you very much. We would like to conclude this first half by bringing out a gentleman. Before, before that, I actually would like to recognize someone in our house, one of the legends of our music is here tonight. I don't know where he is, he's back here somewhere. The great Mr. Lee Konitz. Let's raise the light so we can see Lee. There he is. Lee Konitz. Thank you for coming out, Lee. Thank you very much. We're going to conclude this first half with a gentleman who will celebrate his 90th birthday next year. His, you don't clap for that. <laughs> Wait till you hear what he's going to come out here and do. <laughs> you gonna clap for. He has a stellar career that spans over six decades of absolute excellence. He will be awarded the National Endowment for the Arts' Jazz Master Award in April of 2017, and he is truly a master of many, many styles. Please welcome Mr. Dick Hyman. Thank you very much. Thank you, Wynton. Thank you, gentlemen. And uh, it's an honor to be here. <clears throat> and I would like to play an arrangement uh, that uh, was in uh, Wynton's book. Uh, I, I made a piano feature out of something that Benny Carter wrote some time back. It features a, a beautiful uh, saxophone chorus, which Benny Carter was the... Uh, <clears throat> the acknowledged master of that kind of writing. And where is the music? Oh, yeah. And the song is an old uh, pop song called All of Me.
Mr. Dick Hyman. Dick Hyman. Chris Crenshaw, the trombone. We are your jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra. Thank you so very much. Welcome to our 29th season. Thank you so much for making it possible. We will see you in 15 minutes. We got a lot of, lot more left. Thank you so much. Shuttles in Spain today. You're so so but a little little that little little do. Little rose of spider dead. Fall 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 fall. Little rose we will not beg a do. Fall 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 do. I am Dee Dee Bridgewater and I am a jazz singer. I had always dreamed about being on the stage and I dreamed about performing and I had grown up watching the Ziegfeld Follies and I remember at the age of seven telling my parents that when I grew up I was going to be a very well known international jazz singer and respected by musicians. My father was a trumpet player and uh, we always had, had jazz music playing in our home. I won a vocal contest in Flint, Michigan, and my prize was to sing in a local jazz club. I had to sit in the kitchen because I was underage, and my father was my chaperone and, and uh, took me out to, to sing. They called me Little Dee Dee. It was exhilarating for me. That first performance was a kind of affirmation, I guess, of this desire that I had to perform. I'm a singer, but I think of myself as a musician. I love the trumpet, and I think of my voice as a trumpet, and my favorite musicians, aside from Horace Silver, are trumpet players. My jazz hero is Miles Davis. I always thought in my mind that I wanted to grow up and be like uh, Miles Davis, and I wanted to have my own style like Miles. I wanted to make that kind of statement with my music and, and with the way that I presented myself. Because, I mean, I can see this record, I can see that it's old, it probably was pre-owned, it was played by someone. There are all of these, like, frozen moments. 
and you have access to them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I gave Horace Silver his first piano. It's just another Miles Davis record date. It's like home. That's all it is, man. It's like home. One, two, one, two, three, four. A tisket, a tasket, a brown and yellow basket. I sent a letter to my mommy on the way I drove. What a little moonlight can do to you. Ooh, what a little moonlight can do to you. You're in love, your heart's so flutter all day long. You only stutter because your tongue just will not utter the words, I love you. Ooh, what a little moonlight can do. Oh, you better wait a while till those moonbeams come peeping through. You get bold, you can't resist him. All you say, once you have kissed him, is ooh, what a little moonlight can do. But you see across the street there, there's a loft. It's 237 West 26th Street. Right there. Can you see it right here? I gave Horace Silver his first piano. We went out to dinner one time and he said, you got two pianos here. What are you doing with two pianos? I said, well, I'm going to get rid of one. Could I have it? I said, are you sure? He said, I'll take it. I said, OK. I used to have like. Uh, light green Chanel bedspread drapes on the windows because they were so big. And I remember one time Thelonious Monk came up and the windows would slide them open like this and he put his head out the window. And he stayed like that for about 45 minutes, just looking up at the sky. <laughs> I thought he was probably meditating or thinking about some wonderful song he was going to write or maybe he was just tired. <laughs> I didn't know. But everybody came to that loft, especially Bird, and they were great sessions. All right, now what? More records? Yeah. It's Sonny Rollins. I do have Sonny Rollins. Ah! And I remember when I was 14, I was going to school in Detroit, and uh, across from the school was a hangout for kids, and they had a jukebox. I saw this new thing on there. It said Charlie Parker and his reboppers, not beboppers, reboppers. I said, I wonder what that sounds like. I put my nickel in. Four notes. Whew. I said, that's it. That's the music I'll dedicate my life to. Bird, it was Bird. Bird is the reason I stand here today. Oh, look at Bird. Oh, my God. He used to get me 
up to sing with him, sit in to do a tune. Because, well, you know, I was married to his piano player. Yeah, Duke, right? Yeah, that's right, Duke Jordan. Yeah, I married Duke because I wanted to get near Bird's music. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. But I love my 78s because that's where I learned this music. It was not from school, but from LPs. I mean, from 78s. I wore them white. And I remember I was going with this guy who shall remain nameless. And uh, I went on a tour. And when I came back, all my 78s were gone. I said, where are my 78s? And he said, oh, I threw them out. They were all worn out. So guess what I did? That's right, I threw him out. <laughs> if, if they're history, you're more than history, buddy. You know, <laughs> goodbye. Look what I picked. I have to come back here. This is incredible. I love this place. Can I get some cards from you to give to my friends when they come from Europe? Oh, Fred, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. This is a, a, a wonderful day for me that I will remember. Well, I'll remember it, that's for sure. And every time I put the... I'm going to call Sonny up now and tell him. I'm on fire, thanks to you. And I'll say, yeah, Fred has all these LPs of yours. you got to get down there, man. <laughs>I mean, I can see this record, I can see that it's old, it probably was pre-owned, it was played by someone. There are all of these, like, frozen moments, and you have access to them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I gave Horace Silver his first piano. It's just another Miles Davis record, babe. It's like home. That's all it is, man. It's like home.
But la da da, bell yes da 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 da, been around the world in a playing game. I can shed all the rabbit and do goo shuttles in Spain today. Yes, so so but a little little that let let it do. Little rose of spider dead. Fall, 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 eat a little boss, we will not beg a bird-o. Fall, eat, fall, 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 do. I am Dee Dee Bridgewater and I am a jazz singer. I had always dreamed about being on the stage and I dreamed about performing and I had grown up watching the Ziegfeld Follies and I remember at the age of seven telling my parents that when I grew up I was going to be a very well-known international jazz singer and respected by musicians. My father was a trumpet player and uh, we always had, had jazz music playing in our home. I won a vocal contest in Flint, Michigan, and my prize was to sing in a local jazz club. I had to sit in the kitchen because I was underage, and my father was my chaperone and, and uh, took me out to, to sing. They called me Little Dee Dee. It was exhilarating for me. That first performance was a kind of affirmation, I guess, of this desire that I had to perform. I'm a singer, but I think of myself as a musician. I love the trumpet, and I think of my voice as a trumpet, and my favorite musicians, aside from Horace Silver, are trumpet players. My jazz hero is Miles Davis. I always thought in my mind that I wanted to grow up and be like uh, Miles Davis, and I wanted to have my own style like Miles. I wanted to make that kind of statement with my music and, and with the way that I presented myself.
Because, I mean, I can see this record, I can see that it's old, it probably was pre-owned, it was played by someone. There are all of these, like, frozen moments. And you have access to them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I gave Horace Silver his first piano. It's just another Miles Davis record, babe. It's like home. That's all it is, man. It's like home. One, two, one, two, three, four. A tisket, a tasket, a brown and yellow basket. I sent a letter to my mommy on the way I drive. What a little moonlight can do to you. Ooh, what a little moonlight can do to you. You're in love, your heart's so flutter all day long. You only stutter because your tongue just will not utter the words, I love you. Ooh, what a little moonlight can do. Oh, you better wait a while till those moonbeams come peeping through. You get bold, you can't resist him. All you say once you have kissed him is Okay. Now that I have my glasses on, I can actually see what I'm looking down at. This next young lady is an original composer and improviser. She has received the Doris Duke Performing Artist Award and a Guggenheim Fellowship. And her playing is much deeper than any award she's received. She is a professor of music at the University of California, Berkeley and she brings an optimism and joy to everything that she does. Just having us sit in rehearsal listening to other people was uplifting for us. She represents people who are the age of me and Ted and Victor. <laughs> you knew you weren't gonna escape. Please welcome to the stage the wonderful Miss Myra Melford. Thank you. That was well said, Winton. <laughs> um, I'm so thrilled to be here this evening and this weekend. I have had such a great time getting to know these amazing musicians and so much fun rehearsing with them. They are really a, such a fantastic band. I'm, I'm so honored to be playing with them. We're going to be uh, playing a piece of mine called The Strawberry. I wrote it in 2012 for my current quintet. And I, am, I really want to acknowledge and thank Ted Nash for doing an incredibly beautiful arrangement and a really fun arrangement of it for us. So I hope you enjoy it, The Strawberry.
Myra Melford. Ted Nash, your angel. Myra Melford. Thank you, thank you, Wynton Marsalis. Thank you. Um, when Jason Olane approached me about playing on this concert, um, he suggested that I play a, a piano, a solo piece by Andrew Hill, which is so fitting for a concert about the piano. Um, I owe a huge debt of gratitude to Andrew Hill and um, several other pianists, including Jackie Byer, Don Pullen, Cecil Taylor, Muhal Richard Abrams. These guys totally opened up my world for me when I was a young college student. So I would like to dedicate this uh, piece by Andrew called Images of Time to him this evening. Thank you.
Myra Nelson. Myra Nelson. Our next guest was born in New York. He's played with many musicians of all styles and generations, including Nat Adderley, Roy Hargrove, and Blood, Sweat, and Tears. He has received the Don Redmond Award and the Benny Golson Jazz Master Award. We are honored to welcome to the stage with his off lavender suit, the 75-year-old Mr. Larry Willis. I am so touched and honored to be here and to have been invited here tonight. Uh, my relationship with Winton goes back to when I didn't have gray hair. <laughs> and I got to tell this little story. Uh, on occasion, I used to sub for the late great Kenny Kirkland, who was the pianist in Winton's band at the time. And we, we did a little tour uh, throughout the Southwest. And uh, we drove from El Paso, Texas to Lincoln, Nebraska. But on the way, we had to pass through Kansas City. And uh, my people are from this little town in North Carolina called Scotland Neck, North Carolina. Now, if you can find Scotland Neck on the map, you're good. <laughs> but there was this place uh, in Kansas City called Gates's Barbecue. So we stopped uh, and had some barbecue. And I earned the name from my dear friend, Dr. Marsalis, I am known as the rig, rib man. <laughs> and speaking of Scotland Neck, North Carolina, I'm going to play the first piece I'm going to play was written by a man who was very, very influential in my life, uh, who's from 25 miles from Scotland Neck in a town called Rocky Mount, North Carolina. And he is the greatest, or one of the greatest, Mr. Thelonious Sphere Monk. And uh, we're going to play one of his, I guess, more notable compositions. This is called Rhythming, which was arranged by my dear friend and great reed player, Mr. Sherman Irby. Stand up. And he's brilliant. Okay, let's go.
Trombone. Sherman Irving Arrangement. Well, this next piece uh, was written by arguably, and I'm not going to even argue that point, uh, the most prolific and probably the greatest composer of American contemporary music, certainly of the 20th century. His name is Edward Kennedy Duke Ellington. And this piece doesn't get played very, very often. And Duke was just such a, a master of sound. Uh, this is a, a very, very special piece to me. This is called Melancholia.
Larry Willis. Larry Willis. Thank you very much. Our next guest is 13 years old. And he represents all of the early teens in the world who play with tremendous amounts of harmonic sophistication and rhythmic verve and know how to interact with drummers playing five over everything and play with a golden touch and have an extreme sense of logic and melodic wisdom and all other things that 13 year olds like to do. His genius has been rightly and righteously lauded around the world. He's released two albums, My Favorite Things and Countdown. He is such fun to play with, and his playing will speak for itself. We're happy to welcome him to the stage, Mr. Joey Alexander. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. I want to thank Mr. Winter Masaris for having me here. He's also one of my heroes and inspiration. So, yeah. Thank you. And wow, this is a, I'm so excited to be here and to be back here. <laughs> yes. We gonna play One of Bill Evans' early compositions is entitled Very Early. This is one of the difficult tunes to play, but I love it anyway. <laughs> yeah. And this is an arrangement by, very nicely done, by Walter Branding, everyone. Yes. Yeah. Hope you enjoy.
Joey Alexander. Walter Blanding. Thank you. <laughs> now we're gonna play another beautiful song. This is written by Leslie B. Cues. This is entitled, Who Can I Turn To? Hope you enjoy it.
Joey Alexander. Thanks. Joey Alexander. Not bad for 13. He's going to get an A too. <laughs> now we'd like to conclude by bringing the master back to the stage. We're going to make sure that it's turned around the right way, though. <laughs> That's it. Thank you, gentlemen. Normally, y'all clap for the fellas. <laughs> Billy Banks. Please welcome Mr. Dick Hyman. Thank you, and thank you very much. I'm going to play <clears throat> a piece by James P. Johnson, written a little before Joey's time. <laughs> In fact, uh, James P. Johnson recorded his original piece uh, as a piano roll in 1918, and that was a piece called Carolina Shout. But this one that we're about to do is called Jingles, and it came a little bit later, 1930. All the same, that's uh, a little before Joey's time.
Mr. Dick Hyman. Dick Hyman. Victor Goins, the soprano saxophone and the clarinet. Will the Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra. Dick Hyman on the piano. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. We hope you've had an enjoyable evening. Go home and tell your friends. You heard a 13-year-old followed by an 89-year-old both playing the hell out of the piano. Both playing jazz. Not to let people know whether jazz is alive or not. Welcome to the House of Swing once again. Take care and have a good night. Mr. Dick Hyman, Jazz at Nickerson Orchestra.